Now these are more examples on junior cert type questions on indices or powers. So I'll go through solving some of these and we'll try and keep it nice and slow and easy so you can follow all the steps. So the first one, find 16 to the power of a half plus root 4 cubed. So that's the square root of 4 to be cubed. Now we're not going to use a calculator because it's about understanding the process here because we're not always going to have numbers that we can put directly into a calculator. So let's see, could we do this without a calculator? So 16 to the power of a half. We should know now that to the power of a half from the previous video is the same as saying the square root of 16, okay? Plus, now, the square root of 4 cubed, what's 4 cubed? That's 4 by 4 by 4, okay? Now, square root of 16, that's 4. 4 by 4 is 16, by another 4 is 64. So that's effectively the square root of 64. And of course, that is... 4 plus square root of 64, 8. So 4 plus 8 is equal to 12. So off to a nice easy start. Now this one. 125 to the power of x is equal to 1 over 5. Find x. First off, we're going to bring this 5 up. And what happens to bases of powers when we bring them up above the line? Well, they change sign. So let's keep the 1, 2, 5 over here and bring the 5 up. And it goes to 5 to the power of minus 1. Now we want to bring this 1, 2, 5 down to the similar base over here to try and equate these powers. Can we write 1, 2, 5 as 5 to the power of something? Well, practice will get you there, but you may know that 5 cubed is actually 125. That's 5 by 5 by 5. So we can actually change 125 to 5 cubed, but we can't forget this x outside. Now what happens with this 3 and the x? Do they multiply or do they add? Well a power to a power, as we explained in the previous video, is actually a multiplication. So that's 5, 3 times x, that's just 3x, equals to 5 to the power of minus 1. Now, the only way for this to be true, since the bases are the same, is for the powers to be the same. So 3x must be equal to minus 1, meaning x must be equal to minus 1, over 3. That's that one done. So, question 3. If 16 to the power of b plus 3 is equal to 2 to the power of b, how can we find b? Well, like the last question, let's try and bring 16 to a similar base. Can we write 16 as 2 to the power of something? Well, 2 to the power of 4 is 16. That's 2 by 2 by 2 by 2. Okay, so we can actually change 16 to 2 to the power of 4. And that's to the b plus 3, and that's still equal to 2 to the b. Now, just like the last question, power to a power, do we add or multiply? Yes, we multiply. So that's going to be 2 to the power of, now, 4 times b plus 3. That's 4b plus 12. 4 times b and 4 times 3. That's equal to 2 to the power of b. Now, again, they have the same base, so the only way this equation can be true is if this power is equal to this power. Therefore, let's set 4b plus 12 equals to b. Now let's bring the b over and bring the 12 over there and let's isolate the variable. So we get 4b minus b equals to minus 12. That's 3b equals to minus 12. Our b is equal to minus 12 over 3, which is equal to minus 4. So far, so good. Now, onto a slightly more difficult one. Find the value of this. So 25 to the power of a half and an 8 to the power of 1 third. So 25 to the power of a half. Well, let's remember the power of a half is essentially square root. So that's the square root of 25. Now, plus, what can we do with this? Well, you may remember from the video on the basic rules that I told you that x over y, like if I had that to be squared, like a fraction to a power, the power can come into each term, that's like x squared over y squared. So similarly, we can bring the third power into each term. That's like 1 to the power of a third over 8 to the power of a third. Now, what's the square root of 25? That's just 5 plus. Now, 1 to the power of anything, no matter what you want to put up there, is always going to be 1. So think of it, 1 to the power of 2, that's 1 squared. That's 1 times 1. 1 to the power of 10. That's 1 times 1 times 1, 10 times. That's always going to be 1. Even to a negative, that's like 1 over 1 to the power of something when you make it positive. So 1 to the power of any number is going to be 1, even 1 to the power of 0. 
that's adding to the power of zero is one. So actually on top is going to just go to one. Now eight to the power of a third. A power of a third stands for cube root, like the power of a half stands for square root. So actually this is the cube root of eight. So what is that? Now look, practice again will get you here on this. You will know eventually that things like the cube root of eight because it's an easy one. So something cubed gives us eight. So something by something by something. Well, it's actually two. Two by two by two is equal to eight. That means two cubed is equal to eight. And we're looking to reverse that. So reversing the cube root of eight is actually two, okay? And then you get five plus one over two, that's five and a half. So if you like, that's like 5.5 5 or maybe 11 over two, whichever one of those you prefer. I, I, I never like going to decimal unless I have to. That's that one. And the, the last two. So this top one here, well, the substitution one, if x is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared, find x when a is equal to root two and b is equal to root seven. So just replace a by root two and b by root seven. x is equal to the square root of a, which is root two squared and b which is root seven squared yeah that's x is equal to square root so a square root to a squared actually cancel each other you may learn right so effectively that goes and just gives us a two similarly square root to a squared which gives us a seven now you might ask why well let's remind ourselves from the rules that we know I could change square, I could change this a little bit just so you might fully understand what's happening here. What could I change the square root to a power of? Well, we should know at this stage that's 2 to the power of a half squared. What do I do with these two pairs? Yes, I multiply them. So half times 2 or 2 times a half, that's 1. So effectively, yes, 2 to the power of 1, which is just 2. You can see that's what I got here. Similar for 7, right? So that's something just to convince yourself why we're cancelling square root square root. So x is equal to the square root of 2 plus 7, that's just a number 9, which is equal to 3. And that's it. And to the final one, which is probably a little bit the hardest one. So if 25 to the power of x is equal to the square root of 1, 2, 5, and I think that actually, yeah, square root of 1, 2, 5 over 5. So can we change this actually to something? So yeah, it's certainly a lot more difficult than the others. But let's take it step by step. We're looking for a base that suits all of these. Okay, so what base suits all of these? Well, it's the lowest number usually that we can see. And we not always have it in the question, but let's think of what they can go down to. So five is here. We can't make that at an different with an indice power. But we can make 25, you may notice straight away, is five squared. One, two, five, actually, 1, 2, 5 is equal to 5 cubed. That's 5 by 5 by 5. So it may take a little bit of thinking to get there, but as I said, with practice, you'll start to spot these things. So I can actually change all these things. I'll get rid of the square root and change them all to 5s as well. So I have 5 squared to the power of x. That's 25 to the power of x. Now, square root of 25 that is the square root of 5 cubed. That's still over just a regular 5. Now let's look at this left hand side. What happens to the two powers here? They multiply like all the rest before them. That's 5 to the 2 times x. Now 5 cubed of square root. What can we change the square root to? Yeah, we can change it to the power of a half. And we're still over 5. So I'm taking baby steps here to get us there. So still I have 5 to the 2x on the other side. These two things, well these now multiply. So 3 times a half, if I have 3 halves I have 1 and a half, right? And we write that like this. 3 over 2 over 5, okay? So I'm doing every single step individually. Now, I still on the left hand side have 5 to the power of 2x, right hand side. Well, I have 5 to the 3 over 2 on top. On the bottom, if I bring up that 5, it's going to be now 5 to the power of minus 1. Now, remember from our rules in the first video, 5 to the power of something times 5 to the power of something. It's not a power to a power. So we're not multiplying here. It's a multiplication problem here with the same base. So we actually add these powers. So this can go to this. 
5 to the 2x equal to 1, 5 now, and 3 over 2, and if we add a minus 1, essentially it's plus minus 1, which is minus 1. Now, we're nearly there. The only way for this equation to be true is if, since the bases are the same, if the powers are the same. So 2x must be equal to 3 over 2 minus 1. Now this is just a simple algebra problem, and let's just make it a little bit easier to solve, right? Let's multiply everything by 2 to get rid of that fraction. So that's 4x, the 2 multiplied here gets rid of the 2, 2 times minus 1, minus 2. 4x is equal to 3 minus 2, which is 1. I just want to remind you here that I just multiplied across every single term by 2, in case you want to know that there. So, if 4x is equal to 1, then x must be equal to 1 over 4. So, a potentially very hard problem, but we used the baby steps the whole way, and we came down here, and we went up to here, and came down here. I took as many steps as possible so you may understand it. That's it. Any questions, you can ask them in the comments. If you have similar examples or questions you can't do yourself, you can also ask the same in the comment. Thank you.